Well, it's incredibly frightening in terms of what the repercussions are going to be, uh, not just for the, the families of the people whose jobs have been cut, but for the whole community and the surrounding area. You know, it's not just the, um, the jobs that are being cut at, at Tata and Port Talbot, but that has a knock-on effect. There's a kind of domino effect for uh, the whole region, support work that's going on, other uh, people, uh, jobs that are dependent on what's going on at the steelworks. So, you know, and Port Talbot is a town that has a lot of challenges already. It's not uh, the most affluent of towns. There's a lot of uh, difficulties there that the community is facing. Um, there was a report that said that, uh, you know, th there is a lot of poverty already in Patelbert and half of the people who are experiencing the effects of poverty are working households. So if people who are in work are experiencing the effects of poverty, who knows what's going to happen when these uh, job cuts happen as well. So it's a very frightening time for the town. What you describe on a human level sounds terrible, but on an economic level, we know that this is somewhere losing a million pounds a day. Are you saying that the government should carry on handing out more cash here? Well, you know, this is, like you say, it's part of a much bigger picture. Um, the, the whole of the steel industry, as we've seen through the, the cuts at Redcar and uh, in other places like Scunthorpe, Hartlepool in Scotland as well, this is... This is not necessarily an industry that seems to be on the up and up. It seems to be going in one direction. The government says that they're doing everything they can to help it, um, but their actions and their words don't really fit together. I mean, I'm no expert. I don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes, but I know that a lot of people feel that there's a lot of uh, positive words coming out, but that the actions uh, are not really backing that up, or so if they what, are, it's happening too slowly and, too, and in too small a way. Do you, do you know what actions you'd like to see then, I mean, in, in, in specific terms, without asking the government to just waste more money on something that's not working? Mm. What would you like to see happen? I'd like to see the government be honest, first of all, about whether they really do want to support the steel industry or whether they're just letting it die by stealth. And if they are allowing that to happen, or if they do think that there is no way to support the steel industry, or if they're really kind of dragging their heels over getting involved in the EU uh, rules that are there, that are slowing things down, then they need to put into place very quickly support for the communities that are being affected in this way. Michael, if there's nothing else there for those communities, then that's, that's the biggest danger, isn't let's it? Let's put some of those points straight to Anna Subri now. Do you accept what Michael Sheen is saying, that actually all he's asking for is honesty? That if the yeah, government well, that, doesn't back it... I'm happy to do that. I mean, what he probably doesn't know, he makes a very valid point that, of course, this is a dreadful day. Um, and so when, for example, we know that we effectively, you know, SSI closed up in red car, so there is no more steel in red car. £80 million there, absolutely to support that community so that those workers can get into new jobs and indeed through to the supply chain. The same in Scunthorpe. No doubt the Welsh Government will also come up with the same. Isn't it extraordinary, Talbot, though, that this We has are happened. being very honest about it. And the other this, thing is... Just a second, because right, okay. this has happened in red car, in Scunthorpe, in Port Talbot. Yes, but You've had the Business Select Committee saying the Government was not alert to steel industry crisis warnings. They were asleep well, at the wheel. That, How many times does it have to no, happen no, no, before no. What, you get on top of it? They're very different. No, we are on top of it. What happened up in Red Car was different. That was, uh, that was a... Um, uh, steelworks that have been losing £600 million pounds over two and a half, three years. That was never going to happen anymore. It was, it was gone. And there were huge problems with the Thai owners as well. The difference with Tata is quite profound. First of all, they've been trying to sell their long division, which is based in Scunthorpe, for some two years. And it looks like we found a buyer. We are doing everything we can to make sure that we play a full part in securing that deal. And I can't so go Tata's into the deal of that. It. Is that right? Tata is no, they've, going they've to been sell trying, it. It was on the market two years ago. Right. In Scunthorpe. That's what we call the long division. OK, but now, now we're looking at to Port, Port Talbot. Talbot is very different. Uh, Port Talbot, they've already brought the consultants in, basically to say, right, what do we need to do to keep this place, to, to make sure that it's absolutely sustainable? So they brought the consultants in. Unfortunately, a thousand jobs have already gone. Right. That's part of it. But there's a huge amount that we can do there, and we're willing to do it when Tata come to us with their what, asks. What is that then? Are, we don't are you know. going to They've put more money yet. in? We can't put more money into it. The state aid rules don't allow it. But what we can do, what we have done, electricity prices, for example, uh, we've, we've in, implemented four of the five asked electricity prices, emissions directive, dumping, which I'm quite happy to discuss what we've done on dumping, which I don't think Michael knows about. 
And the other thing that we've done um, is that we've looked at the, 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 okay. the procurement rules. That is hugely important. No other government in the European Union has changed the procurement rules there as we've done. There is a sense done. amongst British steel companies, as you well know, that in many cases they're not even allowed to tender for jobs, for example, at Hinkley Point on a nuclear that's plant. That's something com that's completely different. And in fact, it's 60%, quite important to the steel 60, industry yeah, in Britain. 60%, we reckon, will be available of the steel to be used. Unfortunately... Wait, wait, wait I don't understand that. Because I'm going to explain. Have they because been allowed it, to tender they can, for work be, on Hinkley Point? There will be 60... No, hang on, have they yes, been allowed? Yes. Can I explain why, though, there is a problem? 60% of the steel should be available for British steel. However, 40%, basically, of forgings is no longer made in this country so that's the point about Hinkley Point but in terms of the billions of pounds yeah, of infra you, well this is really I just, important no, I, I know and I want to put to you something that a Labour MP Paul Blomfield has said that because we he's talked available. about Sheffield Steel companies being told by representatives <coughs> of Arriva and EDF there would not be an opportunity to bid on nuclear repair no, and in part of the justification that they were told that EDF had acquired nuclear electric to provide work for underutilized French manufacturing right. well, assets. I can't, Is he wrong? I don't know because I don't Why know Why not? That he said well, that in on. October and you said you didn't know then and you'd be looking into it. No, Ariva, we, I do know about that, so we don't make the steel for that. EDF. So you see, people say things, but when you look at it... EDF acquired nuclear electric, and he's saying that Sheffield companies have not been allowed, steel companies, British steel mean, companies, have not been able to tender. That's what he well, said. That, maybe they They've not had the opportunities anymore. to bid for large forged steel right, but Can elements. we talk about what the government can do? Well, I just want to get to the bottom of that, because that is we've quite delivered important. On. Do you accept that's quite important? What? If the government is promoting British steel no, industry not promote, let me, or not. Let me, let me explain what we're doing. We've changed the procurement rules. It's never been done before so the, for government contracts there is now no excuse not to buy British steel that's never been done before and more than that we've quantified the amount of steel that we anticipate to be available in the billions of pounds that we're putting into the infrastructure of this country so HS2 is a really good example okay we've quantified but, it and then we've shared those figures but we with don't the know what's industry. happening at and Hinkley also Point. you heard the PM and what the Prime Minister said, and this is the point I hope that Michael takes right. away, which is we are absolutely determined that we will keep steel production at both Scunthorpe and at Port Talbot. Okay. And, and as the he point will Labour know, Michael made, knows, and the point steel that production Cymru is have made, furnaces. They have asked you not to give China market economy status at the WTO. Yeah. Are you going to? Well, it's the decision of the European Union, but can I just make it well, very What clear? do you think that decision should be? Should China have market economy status? I'm going to say, in theory, yes, but they have to prove that they will play by the rules. And can I also say, it's really important that we have for the first time in July, then in November, and there's a rebar decision pending, for the first time voted in favour of protectionist measures. That's never happened before. They were so shocked in the European Union at the vote. They say they went back to the that you are helping China it. by giving it market market economy status. No, the overall the sense that workers in Port Talbot have is that your government is more preoccupied with keeping China happy well, than keeping Wales spin. employed. Well, that's the spin that's put on it. That's how it and comes that, across. That comes across to you, but I can absolutely... That was Leanne Wood from Plaid Cymru. Exactly, that comes across to her, but I can absolutely assure you one, we have voted in a way that's never been happened, uh, that happened before to protect steel. And secondly, most importantly, perhaps, is the political will expressed by the Prime Minister to make sure we continue to produce steel blast uh, furnaces okay. at Port Talbot and also at Scunthorpe. That is the determination. And we've delivered on four... You, Forgive me, you didn't ask me what the fifth one we haven't delivered on, but that's a review into rates. I'm to going to go rate. back to Michael Sheen. Does this make uh, more sense to you now, Michael? Does it give you confidence? There is the political will there that is. they are committed to steal in this country and in Port Talbot specifically. Well, I think, you know, the workforce in, in the steelworks there and the larger community have been kind of in the dark for a long time. As soon as it started to become clear that there was problems, um, people were desperate to find out you know, what the plan was by the, the company itself uh, and whether the government had, uh, had, a, had a strategy to, to sort this out. I don't think anyone in Port Talbot is feeling any clearer about that right now. And obviously in the country itself, 
A con the country has suffered so much in the uh, deindustrialized era after the iron and coal industry has gone. Those communities in, in places like the, the, the Rhonda that I've visited are still feeling decimated by what happened. Is and I would hate to see that happen in Port Talbot as well. Is, is it worth the government spending money on, if you like, a way of life, a community to keep that cohesion together? Of course it is, that's why. That's why we put £80 billion well, pounds up into Teesside, for example. But can I just say to Michael, I mean, I went to Port Talbot. I know, I mean, I went there for a day and I know that obviously that's where you were born and bred. But actually, one of the things that really strikes me is not just the union representatives who are outstanding and genuinely, I think, represent their members, but actually with the level of honesty and realism amongst their mainly men, Michael but amongst Sheen. the men themselves. I think they do get it. And I was really struck when I went to Scunthorpe Just as that. well that the men really understood the real crisis the seal industry was in. Michael Sheen. Well, you might, you might understand that you're drowning, but that doesn't mean that you don't still want a no, helping hand that. to stop was, yourself from drowning. I think it was the realism. And even in Red Car, which was a terrible okay. situation, it, it was this, this understanding. You can't argue the price of steel has almost halved in 12 months. Okay. That's, the, that's the reality of it. That's why and in which Tart case, is losing I, in a million pounds case, a day. In which case, and in which case, I would love to hear what uh, the Prime Minister and the government have got in store to help the people of Patel, but if indeed the steel industry, it's, it's a realistically Welsh government. speaking, is on decline. It's a Welsh, it's a Welsh government decision. But so where the door is open, we will always help. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.